Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Okay, so far we've gone through what we might think the end of the year run rate will be, judging by what Elon has told us recently. From there, we created a spreadsheet with estimates of earnings and margins, which in turn were able to provide us with our earnings. Long story short, we estimated that by the end of the year, Tesla would be on a run rate of 2.4 million vehicles a year and the equivalent of $9 billion in earnings for a quarter. Yes, that sounds pretty good, especially considering it's almost three times as much as Q1 to just about triple earnings in the space of less than a year for a company that has already seen this much growth for so long and is also of a valuation of around $1 trillion already. Well, that's not usually a thing. Tesla is breaking the boundaries of the business world we knew. Despite these gargantuan efforts, Tesla still doesn't show any signs of slowing down. In fact, their pace may even increase as these new factories and cells have barely even begun. On top of that, with these latest upgrades in Shanghai, we're discovering more of what Tesla's lines are truly capable of. And Shanghai is using a B architecture. We don't even know what Tesla's A architecture in Berlin and Texas are gonna be capable of yet. We expect 4680s to hit a 100 gigawatt hour run rate sometime next year though. But this video series was about a valuation for Tesla. Remember, a valuation, not a stock price or price target. The market is fickle. Now, previously I have said that Tesla should have a PE ratio of 30 if it was valued as a mature electric car company only, as in when it's no longer such a growth company. I think the macros have changed since then though, and we're in a different market. So perhaps a PE ratio of 23 is better suited. But hang on, GM and Ford have PE ratios of around five or seven. Well, that's because I think the EV industry has a higher valuation than ICE industry. On top of that, this is Tesla who have these crazy margins, which means if demand is ever down in a bad market, they can reduce prices and still make a profit. It's a massive buffer to reduce risk, which is part of the reason Toyota's PE ratio is twice Ford's. Anyway, we're a long way from Tesla not being a growth company anymore. And Tesla is not just a car company. However, the rest of the business is tough to value. This is meant to be a proper valuation though. So let's try it. Therefore, I'm going to first extract the other elements of the company and value them individually and then add them together at the end. I'll start by removing FSD from the earnings, which takes earnings down to 8.7 billion or 35 billion annually. In our scenario, we were at a run rate of 2.4 million vehicles a year. Once the new Shanghai fab is complete and the existing factories are ramped, then we should hit about five and a half million a year run rate. I would say sometime in 2024. After that, there may be some unknowns that are more difficult to risk your money on. Anyway, we know moving forward on from here that all the future vehicles will be produced more efficient at lower cost with better technology. In other words, by this time, although production will more than double, profits will probably be up even as high as 150% due to all our extra economies of scale, improved production and increased demand. Therefore, if we multiplied those profits by 2.5, then those profits become $87 billion in earnings, along with potential of more expansion. So if at maturity, Tesla's auto business has a PE of 23, we could stretch that to a PE ratio of 30 when we reach this scenario, due to so much more potential to still come. Yes, I know a lot more potential, perhaps four times as many cars produced by the end of the decade, but there is a lot that needs to happen for that still. Just to explain what I'm doing here in more detail, I'm taking a run rate of what more tangibly we have now and can foresee and what has been confirmed is coming like the new factory in Shanghai on top of the battery production that will be available to meet this run rate. This should all be achievable and I'm estimating it will be sometime in 2024. Then we can establish how much the company will be worth then and discount it back. With 87 billion in earnings and a P ratio of 30 that comes to a valuation of $2.6 trillion but not until around 2024, if Tesla achieve those numbers, which they look likely to do, and everything is in place in order to achieve that. But it's 2022 now, and Tesla is a growth company. You generally expect a 20% return on growth stocks due to the additional risk you take on. So we will need to discount that back by 20%. Once we discount that, it comes to a valuation of $1.8 trillion, 
and our earnings are 35 billion, then that would mean we have a PE ratio of 52. Okay, that was my way of working out what the PE ratio of Tesla's auto business without FSD will be by the end of the year, if everything goes as well as Elon says. And you know what? It feels about right to me. However, we removed FSD from this whole model. FSD is still a thing, and we estimate it might bring in about $875 million for this quarter we're creating, or $2.6 billion annually. However, if we remove deferred revenue, then it's $4.3 billion. FSD has more potential than anything else ever in the history of commerce. I feel that very little of FSD is even factored into the stock price for Tesla, but at the same time, it is so amazing, it is hard to believe. Yet at the same time, we see these beta videos achieving it, and we aren't even using Dojo yet. Therefore, I'm gonna give FSD a PE ratio of 100, which comes to a valuation of 430 billion. Yes, I understand how much more potential robotaxis have. However, it is hard to place a value on it. There are too many unknowns just yet. But when regulation passes for robotaxis, and they are as good as we hope, once that has been established, then I would honestly feel comfortable adding another zero onto that valuation. Whereas I think right now, Wall Street are probably valuing FSD removing a zero, probably somewhere around $50 billion or something. They don't believe it. I generally refer to it as our lottery ticket. There is energy too, but that doesn't make a net profit. And as a business on its own, it's worth very little. Its value is the leverage it gets from Tesla. Tesla haven't even developed any energy batteries yet. And the LFP sales they are able to get that are suitable for energy, Tesla would rather put them in the more profitable vehicles. Yes, it has so much potential, but there isn't really much of a business there yet. The level Tesla are at right now also has a low barrier to entry. So I think its valuation wouldn't make much impact here as of yet. So I'm just gonna leave it out. Same for robots, at least for now. I want to do my 2030 valuation, which will include the potential of those sides of the business too though. Anyway, when we add $430 billion plus 1.82 trillion, gives Tesla an end of the year valuation of $2.25 trillion. So if Tesla hit that end of the year run rate that we were being told by Elon, and the run rate is able to maintain next year without the new factories having to resort to 2170 sales, then I give Tesla an end of the year value of around two and a quarter trillion dollars or a stock price of around 2,200. Not that I would expect the market to see it that way. You see, this is my own personal valuation, but it's based on extensive research, a lot but beyond full time. It's based on someone who studied business, finance and economics at university with a passion. Also someone who is an avid car enthusiast and knows the product well, based on someone who talks to a lot of other Tesla investors with various backgrounds and different perspectives yeah, I talk to all of you because I enjoy it. And I am interested to hear your perspectives too. Insiders in mining, refining, chips, Tesla employees, the competition or whatever. It's all great to get your opinions. I read all of your comments on YouTube and Twitter. I listen to every word Elon says and analyze it all as best I can. I guess I'm saying that I put a lot of work into valuing Tesla and understanding the company and CEO, but this is extreme. The rest of the market is not to this level. We have a much better understanding of Tesla than the overall market. I mean, clearly. Therefore, we're gonna come up with a different valuation than the market too. And I'm sure even if Tesla did shoot up to 2,200 sometime next year, then the majority of you probably wouldn't sell the majority of your holdings. And remember, I'm saying sometime next year when we have more substantial numbers to actually back this price up. And also remember, this is not my price target for now, or even the end of the year, or even my prediction for earnings or deliveries, as these deliveries need to be realized in an earnings report to move the stock price anyway, which may not even be until around April. But please let me know what you do think and where you differ. And don't forget, you can download the spreadsheet in Patreon too. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.